Hello and welcome to Archery Andy. Now, for this week's video, uh, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I'm actually on a bit of a road trip. I'm uh, going around to see one of the guys I shoot with who is all into making his own arrows, longbow arrows. Now, you know, he's just got himself a cresting machine. He's uh, going to give it, you know, he's going to show me how it all works. Plus, I have some wooden arrows myself, which I haven't got a clue what spine they're for. So, uh, very nervy about shooting them on anything at the moment until I know exactly what kind of uh, pressure they can take. So, uh, we use this spine gauge as well to find out exactly what it can do. So, uh, looking forward to getting over there, looking forward to getting everything sorted. I do warn you now though, when I am around there, we do tend to drink a lot of coffee. So, uh, if I end up talking really fast because I'm pretty much jacked up on a load of caffeine, you know why. So, here we are now outside his house now he's a little camera shy maybe he won't even talk on camera so to protect him I'll, uh, I'll use a pseudonym while I refer to him and I shall call him Simon welcome to arrow making heaven no paints cresting spine testing a lot of arrows a lot of bear shafts waiting and as Simon was 50 just the other day we've even got this little cake man that was on top of his cake and if you need any um, boat wax let me know we have uh, just a few just a few here pounder strip right so quickly check the spine of the arrow using a spine master board here arrow sits on like that Get it approximately in line with the point, doesn't have to be too close. Adjust so it all lines up, and then put a weight on, put the spine under pressure, and then it will line up approximately the poundage. And this one is set at 47 pounds, so there's more than enough uh, spine on that for, for me on my bow. So here we go. Nice wooden shaft, already tapered at the end, ready to receive the knock. The reason for that is so that it sits into the cresting machine nicely and everything lines up perfectly for the cresting. First thing to do though is hand over to Simon, who will check the arrow for straightness. Obviously if there's any deviation to an arrow, any roll, you're not going to get a clean line on it. from the Okay, right, so we're there. So in order to test for straightness, you roll the arrow on the jig, and you can see if there's any movement going on there, then it obviously means that the shaft isn't straight. So you need to straighten that out, but we'll do that another day. So, so I'm going to now pop it into the jig, into the cresting. Obviously move that out of the way. Right, so now using very thin brush, that's actually, what number is that brush? That's a number one brush. And there is already... He's already got his paint ready, isn't he a good boy? Now using the guide that's been set up on the back, now these don't come with the machine, these have been created by Simon for specific designs that he wants to do. This is not a job for someone who wants to rush, this is time consuming. Patience is absolutely a virtue on this. And as with anything, especially with painting, you, you've got to let this colour dry before you even start thinking about the next colour going on. But you don't. But you can do the black because you've got gaps. But yeah. if the colours would join, you can't put another coat of this one on until it's completely dry. So multiple layers will always get a better effect. Yeah, you do two or three coats on it on the light colour because I've got a base colour on there. So, so if you'd done a white base colour and then you would only put a couple of couple of coats, on. couple of coats of the colour on. Works out the same anyway because. I'll put the coat, base coat on anyway. So there you go, as you can see, there's now four distinct blocks being there, 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 and there. Right, so I'm going to bring that in. That's True North Arrows colouring. It's a waterborne acrylic with, and it's actually classed as high gloss enamel cresting paint. 
You see that's quite an instant reaction when it goes on the arrow shaft. I think it also shows why arrows that have been crested can cost so much. It's not a quick job, it's time consuming. Properly. If you mess up, you jump, you jog, is it easy enough to clean that off before it's dried? It can be, but it will leave a stain because I've only shell lacked these. So it's not the wood direct on the wood because it would bleed out. So it's got a slight coating on it, but not a full coating. So if you do clean it up, you will have the colour in the wood. Oh, we do. Okay. So then you'd have to sand down before you start again. So just don't miss. Don't miss. And it's, it's easy, take time, it's fine. We've had three or four coats on the green and the black. Now finishing off with a white. Now the green and black has been allowed to dry. So there shouldn't be any bleeding going through. So now it needs to be very steady with this and a very, again, the thin brush. There you can see it's all lined up against the template at the back. There we go. With a lovely crested arrow shaft. Obviously that's only one of the layers. Because then what's next? Danish oil? Schlacking? Uh, just a water based varnish. A water based varnish. Three coats. Sand down in between, or uh, shouldn't have to. No. And then, obviously, knock, cut to length, pile at the end, feathers, and ready to shoot. And so that was cresting a wooden arrow uh, around at Simon's house, using his cresting equipment. It was a lot of fun. It was nice um, doing that, and also seeing that the wooden arrows that I actually had were definitely over spined for the bow. So I might sell them off, I don't know yet, I might just um, up the poundage or uh, you know, I'll get another bow and shoot them, who knows. So uh, thank you very much for watching, I hope it's been enjoyable, I hope you've um, learned a bit from it, and if you fancy having a go, well, best of luck to you. So um, any questions, obviously just pop them in the comments uh, below and I'll uh, see what I can do about getting back to you with answers. So thank you very much indeed for watching, and see you next time.